Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the object class. I'm going to open up my browser here to javacjava.com, select the menu option, and select Java OOP Tutorials. These are my object-oriented programming tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the object class tutorial. Every class you will ever create is derived at some point from the object class. It is the granddaddy of all Java objects. If you create a class and you do not specifically extend a superclass, then Java implicitly extends the object class as a superclass for you. In the object class, there are 11 methods. Eight of them are regular no argument methods, and then there is the wait method, which has two more overloaded versions. All of the methods in the object class are automatically inherited and available for use in every class that we create. We can override some of these methods as well. I will go over each and every one of these methods in future tutorials. As a matter of fact, I already created a, a tutorial on one of the methods without telling you, the finalize method. When I created my tutorial on garbage collection, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to make a tutorial on the finalize method because the two are closely related. In this tutorial, I will take you to the Oracle website and we will browse around the object class page for a little while. For the code example, I will simply invoke the toString method. Okay, let's go ahead and click on this link here. <coughs> I'll take us over to the Oracle website here and the Java 8 API, API is short for Application Programming Interface, it's the documentation here, and of course we're dealing with the class object. So here's a little overview here. Class object is the root of the class hierarchy. Every class has object as a superclass. All objects, including arrays, implement the methods of this class. Uh, just has a single no argument constructor and then here's the methods what we're really interested in here we have clone equals finalize get class hash code notify notify all to string wait wait and wait last two waits have a first one has uh, these overloaded ones here this one has a single parameter one and this one has two parameters on these overloaded uh, versions of that <clears throat> okay, so the one we're interested in is toString today, and it'll return a string type. And actually, I'm going to talk about finalize first, since I already did that one. Called by the garbage collector on an object when garbage collection determines that there are no more references to the object. So if you haven't watched my tutorial on garbage collection and the finalize method, it's, uh, it's, good to, it's a couple good, good, good tutorials there. You'll definitely want to watch, the, watch those if you haven't already. So the toString returns a string representation of the object. Wow, that's pretty vague. So let's pop back to my website here, go down to the code section, highlight this, hit Control C, or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can right click, select new shortcut, type in CMD, click next and finish, right? That's all there is to that. I'm going to go ahead and open up the command prompt, type in Java C, which is the command line tool for the Java compiler. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on uh, installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before you continue on. <coughs> CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java. I already have it, but if you don't, It'll go ahead and create one for you. We'll change directories to the Java folder. Then I'll make a directory called the uh, object class. Change directories to the object class, and then I'll type in notepad the object class.java. The object class.java is going to be the name of our source code file, also known as our compilation unit. Control V to paste. File save. Okay. There's just two classes in this, um, the object class source code file. Class Acme, and then of course the object class. Class Acme is just a completely empty class here, minimum structure. Uh, basically, we've got our main method entry point, and the first thing I'm going to do is create an Acme ref ref reference variable of Acme object type, right? And set that equal to 
Um, the new operator here will basically create an instance of the app, an object instance of the ACME class, right? And um, assign a reference variable back to that object instance. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I've got a my string variable here of string object type, and I'm gonna assign that to the result of the to string method for the ACME ref reference there. So we come down here to the ACME class and we're like, oh, well, there's no to string method. How's this going to work? Okay. And one of the things I said is if you don't actually, you know, extend uh, the object class, it'll implicitly do it for you, right? So we could do extend object, right? This sometimes is a little easier to see. So everything to the left, uh, the name to the left of extends is the subclass. The name to the right is the superclass. So as we know from previous tutorials that uh, you inherit all of the methods of the superclass when you extend it, okay? Now this is done implicitly. We don't have to actually type that out there. So that's where we get our, our that's how we can invoke the toString method. And then we'll just simply display to the console my string equals plus the value of my string, whatever's returned back from the toString method. And then I'll just print my, I'll do this to the console here, acme ref equals plus whatever, you know, Acme ref actually is. So let's make sure I save that. Let's go ahead and run this here. Compile it. And let's run it. So we get my ref equals Acme at and then a hexadecimal number here, right? And we get the Acme ref equals Acme at and then some hexadecimal number. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, go over to the documentation on the API and figure out just what's going on here. In the, um, if you've been watching my past tutorials, I basically describe the, the reference when I print, when I display it using the print line there. I say, well, basically the object reference, you know, contains the, um, the name of the class that, that we have the instance of, which is Acme, followed by the at symbol, followed by this hexadecimal representation of where the object resides in the heap memory, right? So and that's kind of an overgeneralization, but it, it is, you know, in fact true here. Let's go ahead and go over to the API documentation here. So from the documentation, we can scroll down to toString, or we can just simply click on the link there, and I'll take us down there. Um, so returns a string representation of the object. In general, the toString method returns a string that is textually represents this object. The result should be a concise but informative representation that is easy for a person to read. It is recommended that all subclasses override this method. They're like practically begging us to override this one. So, um, but you can't override all of the methods in that, just a few of them. So, the two string method for, for uh, sorry, the two string method for class object returns a string consisting of the name of the class, right? of which the object is an instance, and then the at sign character, right? And then the unsigned hexadecimal representation of the hash code of the object, right? Okay, so this is this is kind of where we're like, what? What's that? That is, doesn't say it's like a, where it's located on the heap memory, so. In other words, this method returns a string equal to the value of, and you don't have to understand what this is, but this basically gets the name of the class, and then you've got this actual character little right here for the at sign and then don't worry about what integer dot hex string to hex string is right and, but it's actually getting some sort of value from a hash code method oh wait i remember talking about a hash code method just a few minutes ago right which is uh, up here that was somewhere up at the top here we go hash code so hash code is actually one of the methods of the object class so returns a hash code value for the object. This method is supported for the benefit of hash tables such as those provided by HashMap. You're probably going, what? Uh, don't worry about all this. It's so beyond the scope of where we're at right now. Um, what we want to do is we just want to come down here to this wording that's inside of these, this parentheses block here. So this is typically implemented by converting the internal address of the object into an integer, but this implementation technique is not required by the Java programming language. So let me translate this little, be the lawyer here and translate all the lawyer language here. So the internal address of the object, 
basically what that means is where the object is located internally in memory, right? And objects are located on heap memory. So that's where it uh, comes out to be like, okay, this is just basically a hexadecimal representation of where the object is located on the heap, okay? Uh, that is that. So let's go ahead and pop back to our code over here <clears throat> so we can see our result the name of the class, at symbol, and where the object basically is located uh, on, the, on the heap memory. All right. So the other thing that I wanted to show you here is that basically, you know, you've seen me display this many times, you know, to the, to the print line. If you've been watching, well, using the print line method to display the object reference, or the uh, reference variable directly to the console. <coughs> Excuse me. Get some water. So what has that actually been doing? You know, it'll display, you know, this Acme at, and then the, the, where the object resides in the heat memory, basically. So all this time, what the print line has actually been doing is it's actually been invoking the toString method for this reference, right? It's actually been putting this whole thing in here if I just specify that. And that's just part of one, some of the functionality of the print line method here that will go ahead and do that. Okay, so now you should see a light bulb lighting up there and going, oh, okay, I get why that's even displayed there now, right? So, and the other thing I wanted to go over here real quick is that we can actually put extends object in here, right? And save that up, recompile it, rerun it, and get the same exact thing. So it doesn't really matter whether it's in there or not. If it's not in there, if it is in there, people might think you're like, why are you putting that in there? You know, you don't want to have to like explain it to them if they don't know why you would put something like that in there. But um, just know that it's there, even if you can't see it. So it's implicitly there. Um, if we go ahead and recompile that, rerun it, you get the same exact result. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you with uh, just a final thought here. Over time, you will come to learn the purpose of each and every method in the object class. The object class is the original building block for the Java language. Having a clear understanding of the object class will be necessary to comprehend more advanced concepts. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.